Hi, I'm Harper. Ciao, I'm Eva. Today we are here to make uh, gnocchi. Now, I realize that I'm no Massimo Bottura, but I do know that gnocchi normally have potatoes in them, and I see none here. Yes, in Italy we have gnocchi di patate, but today we are going to make gnocchi alla romana, that uh, they have nothing to do with potatoes. <laughs> so this will be good for those thousands of people who write us saying, I love gnocchi, but I'm allergic to potatoes. I'm just kidding, never heard from anyone who said that. <laughs> but if you're out there, this one's for you. Anyway. <laughs> there, someone must be allergic to potatoes. Before we begin, a quick shout out to a pasta grammarian in action who made not only a yummy looking carbonara, but used homemade guanciale. How does it feel to have been out italian by someone? Good, because it seems that people, they are start to learn. So I'm proud, bravo. If you want to become a pasta grammarian, you don't have to make your own guanciale. Just hit that subscribe button. And let's get cooking. What we have in front of us, what we are going to use. All right, um, we have salt, nutmeg, butter, an egg, uh, what is it? It's semolina flour. Oh, yeah. semolina flour. We got milk and we have two types of cheese. Uh, so I'm gonna assume pecorino and parmigiano. Bravo. This kind of gnocchi is very different from the gnocchi that usually people uh, eat or they think of. But uh, it's a very traditional uh, and ancient uh, dish. And also it was the proper di the dish that it was served in Rome Thursday. Every Thursday on the Roman menu there were gnocchi. Oh, so it's kind of like Taco Tuesday. See, si, so it was very <laughs> gnocchi. Gnocchi Thursday is <laughs> like... Uh, Hashtag gnocchi Thursday, guys. These gnocchi are uh, unusual gnocchi, as we said, because you don't need to work with your hands. What you need is this. So, pour the milk in the pot. Easy. Easy. Butter. I just add it right in? Yeah. A pinch of nutmeg. Pinch of nutmeg. I'll call that a pinch. Mm. Va bene, could be, as we say in Italy, it could be quanto basta. Salt. A pinch? A pinch, a, a pinch and a half. Could be. Turn on the heat. What temperature? Medium. We need just to let the butter melt. Okay. And when the butter is completely melted, you start to pour this, like if you are doing a polenta. It's almost like a, like a reverse bechamel. See, si, si, more or less. We don't need the milk boil. Boiling? Okay. Boiling. We don't. We need just to melt the butter. Are you excited to make your first gnocchi alla romana? I mean, I'm, I'm very fond of my potato gnocchi, so. I love potato gnocchi. I could eat potato gnocchi breakfast, lunch, and dinner seven days a week. Okay, but believe me and trust me, these are very good. I the... trust you. Okay, so now. Just a little bit at a time, I assume? A little bit at the time and stir because we don't want the clump. Okay, it's all in. Oh yeah, thickened right up. It's like a gravy. Now that we don't have clumps, right? No clumps. We can substitute that with this. Okay. So keep stirring. And we need to cook it a little bit. We need to make it more uh, dense, more thick. It's like turning into like a dough. So. When we reach this consistency, that is the consistency we want, mm -hmm. move them from the heat here. Okay. Now, what we need is to add their one half yolk. So I should separate it here? Separate the white from the yolk. Mix it. We need the egg very well incorporated inside. Okay, I think that's pretty well mixed in. Perfecto, now we need to grate some parmigiano here. Tell me when I've achieved some. Here uh, the rule is always the same, what you put inside is what you will find after it's cooked. 
So, <laughs> not too much, but the right quantity to taste also the parmigiano. I think that this is enough. So that is some, according to Eva. Now, mix very well. Everything is well mixed. I think so. Now, Harper, what we need is a piece of parchment paper. Do you remember when we made the salame di cioccolato? Yes. We need to make the same thing with this. Just kind of roll it into a log? Yes. Okay. Should I just spread it out like this? Yes, you need to make what we call a salsiccio, the shape of a sausage. So let's say as the shape of a soppressata calabrese. Do you oh, know? you should have just said a soppressata calabrese. Ah, the shape See. of a soppressata calabrese. Do you, do you know the soppressata yeah, calabrese? Yeah, of course. And so does everyone at home. And if someone doesn't know, they are missing something. So I'll go and check the soppressata calabrese. And try to... Okay. Uh, squeeze it more? Si. What do you think? Harper, perfetto. Close it with this parchment paper. Okay. So it has this shape, it maintains this shape. And we leave it just 40 minutes to rest and cool down. Okay, well we'll be back in 10 to 15 minutes. Dan, we're back. It's cold. What we need to do now is open it. Very gentle. It's delicate. Pay attention. Oh. Now, because this is a dish that needs to be baked, mm -hmm. what we need to do? Preheat the oven. 180 gradi. 100 wait, wait. Ch 180 Celsius? Si. <laughs> hey, sir. What is 180 degrees Celsius in Fahrenheit? 180 degrees Celsius is 356 degrees Fahrenheit. 355. Now, we need to cut, you need to cut <laughs> our gnocchi in, uh, uh, how do you say, disc? Mm -hmm. Disc in the shape of a disc. And uh, thick, uh, more or less, uh, one, like one of my fingers. Okay, I just line them in here. Perfect. Like that? See, si, but may maybe my finger is a little bit... Uh, Thinner than mine? Maybe. Maybe. How's that? That is perfect. It's a very easy recipe. So it every, is, it's cool too. Everyone can make gnocchi alla romana. If I can do it, you can do it. Alper, perfetto! I don't know what can I say more than perfetto! I think that Massimo Bottura can hire you. A boy can dream. Now, Alper, we need to season our gnocchi. The traditional seasoning for the gnocchi alla romana is some melted butter. Bravo! Just melted. Okay. You need to pour this butter on the top of our gnocchi. I just do you drizzle need a, it over? See, si, do you need a spoon? That seems like a good idea. Grazie. We are keeping this dish very traditional and very simple. Now, at this stage, if you want to season your gnocchi with some bechamel, uh, some, uh, I don't know, tomato sauce, uh, some uh, gorgonzola. Some pineapple. Uh, no, maybe not. Maybe this can avoid. You can avoid. Grated some pecorino because gnocchi alla romana requires pecorino romano. Oh, that makes sense. Buongiorno, Harper. Uh -huh. Okay. And the only thing that now we need to do is bake them for about 20-25 minutes. It depends from your oven. What we are looking for is to create a sort of what we call crosticina. Yeah, like a, a crispy crust of cheese, yeah? Perfect. Okay, so. popping these in. Okay, so we'll be back in about 20 to 25 minutes. See?
Gnocchi alla romana senza patate. Eh sì, because they are gnocchi alla romana. They smell very very good, Harper. Now I need to understand if you did or not a good job, because here I'm the judge. Buon appetito! Buon appetito! We can tag this in our Gnocchi Thursday new hashtag. Yes, they are good. Thank you. They're nothing like potato gnocchi, so don't make them and expect that. But if you do make them, expect a very different but incredibly delicious dish. Also super easy to make. Guys, we hope you enjoyed this recipe. We still have some spots available on the Pasta Grammar tours. If you want to travel to Italy with us, go to pastagrammar.com slash tour and check out the itineraries there. Give this video a thumbs up, hit the subscribe button if you haven't already, and we'll see you next time. Ciao. Ciao.